Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I've joined forces with Covenant Cannon to get you guys ready for Halo Infinite by covering the lore behind every single banished vehicle in their entire armada. However, before we get into the video, I've just got one question to ask you. When you first saw this shirt, were you blinded by its majesty? Paralyzed? Dumbstruck? How about this glorious array of designs? Or perhaps an iconic vessel for your finest liquids? Well, I'm very excited to announce that my new merch line containing all of this and more is now officially live! Head on over to hiddenexperia.madebystarstuff.com or just click the link in the description to pick up a piece of iconic streetwear today. We've got a wide array of incredibly iconic designs for you to choose from, all curated by yours truly. On a serious note though, I absolutely love these designs. We put a lot of blood and sweat, no tears, but a lot of blood and sweat into designing them. It's quite hard to design YouTuber merch because you don't just want to put the logo on a shirt and be done with it because that's kind of cheap. We put a lot of time and effort into designing all of these designs uh, to be kind of related to both my content, Halo, without breaking any copyright laws, and also related to my personal interest in clothing and my personal taste in clothing, what I like to buy. And honestly, I think they all turned out absolutely just incredible, so... Go and check them out, hiddenexperia.madebystarstuff.com. I want to thank the entire team for working on this. There's been a lot of work going to this merch line, and I'm so happy with how it turned out. And hopefully, fingers crossed, you guys will be as well. Right, so the video. I'm going to cover the lore behind all of the banished land vehicles here in this video. And then I'm going to hand it over to Covey Cannon, who's going to cover the lore behind all of the banished air vehicles, fighter ships, and naval ships in a video over on his channel the link to which will be in the description. Don't forget to both sub to me if you for some reason haven't done so yet, and also sub to Covey Cannon as well. The man is so close to 10k subs, let's try and get him there tonight. So without any further ado, let's begin today's lore. The Skitterers are a very strange little vehicle that were born from harsh covenant restrictions on AI research that prevented the development of autonomous weapons. However, to try and circumvent these restrictions, Prophet technicians utilised carefully selected Letgolo colonies in place of standard AIs, giving them control of weapon systems instead. However, the results proved inconsistent. It wasn't until the banished hunter commanders, Colony, got a hold of this tech that it truly became viable in the field. Their familiarisation with their own species allowed them to perfect this AI substitute, allowing for the Skitterer to be mass-produced without any of its previous behavioural issues caused by rather unruly let go colonies being put in with the rest. Within the banished, the Skitterer is employed as a light scout and escort unit, Given its small size and relatively weak light energy beams, or slightly stronger, albeit still relatively weak focus beams, its strength instead comes from its numbers. They can be employed en masse to swarm the enemy or combined with existing units to act as their escorts, offering both their focus beams and their defensive shielding capabilities to ensure the safety of whoever, or whatever, they're escorting. The Banished Ghost functions very similarly to the regular Covenant Type 32 Ghost, with the main difference being its aesthetic. The Ghost is now up-armoured and, in a very typical Banished style, the glossy purple metals have been replaced by heavy-duty grey and red armour plates, to both make it more durable and also to give it the unique Banished aesthetic, making it just that bit more intimidating on the battlefield. Like the regular Ghost, it functions on a gravity propulsion system, allowing for a 132km per hour top speed and nimble manoeuvrability, all while remaining quiet, making it the perfect infiltration vehicle. It has the usual pair of linked forward-firing Class II directed energy cannons for offense, although the Banished appear to have slightly modified these cannons to fire red plasma instead of blue. How fitting. It also comes with an optional shielding ability, along with a rather unique anti-cloaking ability as well, which allows it to sniff out any one or anything using active camouflage technology to hide in plain sight. Much like the Ghost and, well, many other banished vehicles, 
The Banished Chopper is a modified version of the Base Covenant Type 25 model. Considering the Banished built their armada by pillaging Covenant supply stores, this should hardly be a surprise. Like the regular Chopper, the Banished Chopper is also powered by a cyclical engine that drives a gigantic wheel at the front of the vehicle, offering a perfect concoction of maneuverability, devastation, and speed, topping out at a deadly 120 km per hour. This wheel also gives the Chopper even more ramming capabilities than other vehicles. This thing can mince pretty much anything it touches. However, if somehow that isn't enough to destroy the enemy, it also comes with two side-mounted 35mm autocannons that shred light vehicles and infantry like paper mache and also put a pretty serious dent in heavy armour as well. Just like all the banished units, the chopper received an armour plating upgrade along with the staple grey and red colour scheme of the faction. In addition, the banished also developed a terrifying, yet rarely encountered variant of the chopper the Terror Chopper, which fires high explosive shrapnel rounds instead of the usual 35mm rounds, and has a set of extremely intimidating and rather violent spikes mounted on the front, along with supplementary anti-cloaking technology. Although the banished variant of it is yet to be seen, the Type 52 Prowler is still employed by banished forces as an infantry support vehicle. Presumably, the Banished Prowler is just a Type 52 in all but its armor plating and color scheme, and so, again, presumably, it still functions on its gravity-assisted sled foundations like the regular one, the core of which can be seen rotating in the center of the vehicle when moving, with a nimble, yet relatively weak plasma turret mounted on the front, and multiple passenger seats on both left and right skis. However, there is a new Banished vehicle that... <laughs> like many things related to Infinite, we've only seen in a Mega Block set as of now. The Skiff Intercept, which seems to share many key design elements with the Prowler, from the turret placement to the apparent size to even its use of skis. So perhaps the Skiff Intercept is what the Prowler kind of became when it was banished eyes if that's even a word. Or maybe the Skiff Intercept is an entirely different vehicle altogether, I guess. Only time will tell, but the similarities there are definitely striking. The Marauder is an infantry fighting vehicle employed en masse by the Banished, the design of which can be traced all the way back to the brute civil wars that took place roughly 30 or so years before their first contact with humanity on their home planet of Doizag that ultimately ended in nuclear war and the near extinction of their species. During this war, several brute clans made heavy use of armoured hovercrafts, of which the Marauder was heavily inspired by. It appears to be powered by two large front-facing engines, with a turret that protrudes from the rear of the vehicle, which combine to give it an almost scorpion-like silhouette. The turret itself is a Class II medium plasma mortar, the exact same as the Revenant's turret, yet it appears to clearly have undergone some serious modifications to reduce its profile compared to the one in the Revenant, and to further supplement this already devastating weaponry, missile launchers are built into its chassis. The Banished also have two variants of the Marauder. The Marauder Warchief, which has flags behind the turret to inspire troops on the battlefield, and the Prowling Marauder, that comes with an inbuilt cloaking system for stealthier operations. The Type 29 Shadow is a vehicle employed by many Covenant factions, the Banished included, to ferry large numbers of troops and vehicles into battle. Piloted by a well-defended driver in the front, light vehicles such as Ghosts or up to 8 infantry can be stored in the undercarriage, all guarded by a relatively heavy Type 29 anti-infantry plasma turret, elevated above the pilot seat, offering safety for the gunner as well as good fields of fire. Although all this armament and defense comes at the cost of poor maneuverability and a relatively slow 106 km per hour top speed, making the Shadow and all of her crew highly susceptible to light assault vehicles. The Methane Wagon is an odd vehicle. Apparently, according to field research, the Wagon is a bastardized version of the Shadow, created by Grunts under the command of Yap Yap the Destroyer. It's rickety, it's slow, it's unstable, and has a brake pedal made of a nice, reliable chunk of wood. 
and comes with three large methane tanks mounted on its rear and more that can be catapulted from it. These create a constant methane aura surrounding the vehicle, making nearby grunts stronger and more aggressive, but at the cost of an extremely violent explosion upon destruction, which is hardly a surprise given methane's properties. Unlike the Shadow, however, the wagon appears to be powered by several large chopper wheels, and despite its creators being grunts rebelling against the Banished, it for some reason still retains the unique Banished colour scheme and armour plating. The Reaver is an extremely unique vehicle, and as far as the records can indicate, a strictly Banished vehicle. Technically a bipedal mech instead of a vehicle, the Reaver bears telltale marks of both workshop and assembly vat construction, which hint at its origin being traceable all the way back to the brute homeworld of Doizak. It acts as a more efficient and deadly replacement of the AA wreath within the banished arsenal. Considering its specialization as an anti-aircraft mech, the pilot sits between 10 Thrasher missile pods. These Thrasher missiles seem to have some sort of homing technology built into them, making it near impossible for their targets to escape total destruction once they've been fired. To counter infantry, beneath the nose is a light spiker autocannon, which doesn't really do much, but the ultra-powerful legs of the Reaver allow it to leap great distances to escape any infantry that would otherwise be able to bring it down with ease. And then there also exists one known variant of the Reaver, the Prowling Reaver that comes with an inbuilt cloaking system. The Banished Wraith perfectly encapsulates the faction's aggressive and brutal approach to design. Built off the back of the Type 26 Wraith, it retains all its most important features. It's powered by the same boosted gravity propulsion drive, offering a smooth, quiet and, well, kind of nimble ride, topping out at 82 km an hour. It retains the iconic Type 26 35cm directed energy mortar, offering devastating damage output over short, medium and longer ranges, and further, it utilises the pre-2549 model's secondary weapons, two medium plasma cannons mounted on either side of the pilot hatch, useful for swatting away infantry who manage to get into boarding range. However, in addition, the Banished Wraith comes with aggressive spikes mounted beneath the hull, along with extra armor plating and the typical crimson grey color scheme. But as per usual, the Banished take it one step further and employ multiple variants of the Wraith in their ever-growing arsenal. Firstly, the Terror Wraith, which comes with more significantly larger front ramming spikes, energy shielding, and a modified cannon, now firing plasma mortars infused with infusion gel a deadly substance that has napalm-like effects on anyone or anything unlucky enough to come in contact with it. Secondly, the Ironclad Wraith, a somehow even heavier armoured variant of the standard Banished Wraith, with ultra-thick grey metal covering the entire body, shielding, and an upgraded Scorch Mortar, which fires a superheated version of the standard mortar that leaves excruciatingly hot plasma on the ground after impact. And thirdly, the Wraith Invader, a highly modified variant of the Wraith that transforms it into an armoured personnel carrier. The Invader capitalises on the incredibly thick hull of the standard Wraith to offer near impervious cover to the infantry stationed within, allowing for their safe transport into even the hottest of battlefields. It was created by Pavium, who seemingly combined the damaged hulls of destroyed Wraiths with still intact Wraiths to increase its length while still retaining its resilience, creating a 16-seat APC that was strong enough to withstand almost any fire. The Banished also repurpose a post-war Covenant creation as well, the Grunt Goblin. Well, I say the Banished and really, I mean Yap Yap the Destroyer. The Goblin was designed in the likeness of the Forerunner's pre-Ascension form, which was popularised among the Grunts by a famous Grunt theologian, Ang Nap Nap the Enlightened. It's designed only for Grunt use and compensates for their weak combat abilities heavily. Not only does it feature thick, rugged, banished armour plating, which makes it even stronger than its base form, but it comes with several means of offence. Number one, a large, double-barreled heavy needle cannon that's mounted on its left arm that fires huge, devastating needles that shred both infantry and vehicles alike, and then also, on its back, supplementing its jet engine-like jump pack that it has, is a Shard Storm Launcher, 
which fires several clouds of needles, creating an instant super combine upon impact. And then for utility, the Banish Goblin comes with an area healing ability, allowing it to heal all allies in a 360 degree radius around it. The Banish Locust is identical in almost every way to the Covenant Type 30 Locust, an excavation platform meant primarily for the excavation of ancient foreigner sites, but also used offensively as well. It was meant to be a tank-sized counterpart to the Scarab, weaker in all areas, but much more portable and manoeuvrable. The Banish Locust retains this nimbleness, along with its destructive anti-structure excavator beam, which is now unstable, giving it an even higher damage output. The only new addition is the heavy crimson and grey armour plating. The biggest difference, however, is its size. The Banish Locust is under half as wide as the Covenant Type 30, possibly due to their pilots now being grunts supported by Let Golo Worms, as opposed to the Type 30 that was typically piloted by Elites or Brutes. However, the still extremely high damage output of the Banish Locust is just further proof that size doesn't matter. Well, for most things, of course. There are also two variants of the Banish Locust. The Blood Fuel Locust, which swaps out its excavation beam for an unstable focus cannon that is complete with siphoning capabilities, which allow it to somehow absorb the life from any target it hits to heal itself as it damages the target. We still have no idea how this technology functions. And also, the Enduring Locust, a variant with a rather strange zebra pattern on its turret and that a number of infantry troops jump out of when it goes down to continue the fight that the Locust started. Why they don't die with the Locust is unknown. Maybe it's something to do with the zebra pattern. At this point, no one really knows. And the final banished land vehicle is a behemoth the mother of all banished and covenant land vehicles, the Banished Scarab. Seemingly a model that is entirely unique to the Banished, this Scarab is arguably the most devastating of all the Scarabs. It comes with an unstable plasma beam, effective against pretty much anything it wants to be effective against, and six Thrasher missile pods on the back to spot any aircraft that try to outmaneuver this hulking beast. The entire body is covered in a thick reinforced armor plating, ensuring the pilot and the colony of Let Golo within that control the Scarab are safe from all projectiles and explosives, and further enhancing its staple ultra intimidating experience, the plasma dripping from the heavily armored focus cannon gives it an almost feral and rather untamed look. And then, as if it couldn't get any stronger, it even has a built-in shield projector, for the rare instances when the fire it's sustaining is actually able to make a dent in its chassis. However, regardless of all its heavy armor, it remains ultra-mobile, able to traverse all manners of terrain at gradients that most other vehicles couldn't even consider traversing. This is made possible by four massive legs, powered by plasma generators made unstable by banished engineers overclocking them trying to maximize the Scarab's firepower. However, in doing so, the Let Golo Worms inside are rapidly killed by the plasma spewed from this overclocked generator, a trade-off that brute engineers clearly deem to be worthwhile. And then, of course, there exists a variant of the Scarab, the Volatile Scarab, that harnesses the raw power of Infusion Gel. Its focus cannon is now infused with the gel, leaving behind a pool of flesh-melting liquid wherever it touches, and requiring specialized pilots to sit in the cockpit, who apparently are indeed protected from the large containers of the gel by the Scarab's containment systems, and unleash napalm-like hell at any who stand in its way. And so, that concludes all of the banished land vehicles. Now, my trusty compadre, Covey Cannon, is going to cover all of the banished air vehicles, the fighter ships, and the naval ships in a video over on his channel the link to which is in the description. So go over, digest some hearty lore, and then don't forget to subscribe as well. The man is very close to 10k subs. Let's get him over that number. Please don't forget to go and check out my new line of merch, hiddenexperia.madebystarstuff.com. I can guarantee you there is going to be a design in there, whether it's on a shirt or a hoodie or a sweater or a cap or hell, even a mug or a phone case that I guarantee you're going to love. I, I guarantee you will do so. Go and check it out. The link is in the description also. 
And with that said, that's all for today. I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons for the continued support over there, as per usual. And thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. <laughs>